Hello all, my name is Saurav Singh and here I am presenting you with the second lecture in the lecture series of vehicle dynamics. In this lecture, we will be starting with the longitudinal dynamics videos. So this is the first video in the longitudinal dynamics in the vehicle dynamics lecture series. So in this video, we will be dealing with modeling for power and hybrid vehicle powertrain. So for those who have seen our first video, I have talked to you about that vehicle dynamics is subcategorized into three main branches. When you study about the vehicle dynamics, you do not study it as a whole. You study it in the three different parts. First is the longitudinal dynamics, second is the lateral dynamics, and third is the vertical dynamics. So here I am starting with the longitudinal dynamics. And I will be teaching you about how to model for power and what is the different configuration of the hybrid vehicles. So let's get started. First, we want to tell you what are the topics that are covered inside the longitudinal vehicle dynamics in this vehicle dynamics lecture series. So we will be talking about driving resistance, driving performance, acceleration and braking, fuel consumptions emissions, longitudinal tire slip, propulsion layout. So driving resistance is the resistive forces that are acting on the vehicle in motion. Driving performance, actually to overcome the resistance, there is always a powertrain system required. That powertrain system can either be internal combustion engine based or can be uh, electric vehicle or hybrid electric vehicle based. So for acceleration and braking, when the vehicle speed is increasing with time, this is acceleration and the vehicle speed is decreasing with time, it's braking. In fuel consumption, since the vehicle is having resistive forces, so to overcome that uh, engine or a powertrain is required. So uh, the powertrain is always consume fuel. Electric vehicle consumes fuel in the form of electricity. Engine consumes fuel in the form of uh, petrol, diesel, whatever required and hybrid electric vehicle consumes both so when the fuel is consumed there will be a emission norm so we will be studying about the emissions that are happening due to the uh, in, uh, powertrain fuel consumption and what are the norms related to that we will be studying about the longitudinal tire slip that is also a very big topic in longitudinal vehicle dynamics but it is uh, somewhat combined to the lateral dynamics because there is a longitudinal tire slip lateral tire slip we will also be studying about the power propulsion layout. So in propulsion layout, today we are going to see about the hybrid vehicle. So longitudinal and force and resistance. Starting the longitudinal vehicle dynamics, the study of force and resistance will give you a proper idea that what are the forces that are acting on the vehicle, and what are the forces that are acting against the vehicle and acting for the vehicle. Okay, so the forces are driving forces that are help in the vehicle driving. There are braking forces when the brakes are applied, the vehicle decelerate that is the braking forces. There are rolling resistance since the vehicle tires make contact the ground. Either since uh, understand it is it is not a point contact, so there is a rolling resistance due to the uh, contact with ground. There is an aerodynamic brake because of the air that is flowing around the vehicle and there are the climbing resistance mg sin theta component of the vehicle is opposing it there is total vehicle mass that is that is to be taken in account there is a climbing angle that is what is the slope of the road on which vehicle is moving there is vehicle speed the speed at which vehicle is moving and there is a dynamic wheel radius so these are the parameters that act on the vehicle, that act for the vehicle, or that act against the vehicle. So these are the force and resistance. Uh, we will talk about resistive forces in detail because these are the forces that are being modeled for calculating the power demands of the vehicle. So basically, when we talk about the resistive forces, there are four different resistive forces that act on vehicle. First is the inertial force, then we have rolling resistance, then we have aerodynamic drag, then we have climbing resistance. Inertial force. Inertial force is basically because of inertia. 
every component that every component or every sub substance that has a mass has a characteristic of inertia as explained by newton first law the body which state at a rest of motion which is state in a state of rest remains in the state of rest or which in the state of motion remains in the state of motion so when vehicle is in the state of rest this requires an external force needed to be applied to make it move so this is the inertial force that is not uh, making it to move so these are the initial resistive forces acting on the vehicle rolling resistance when the vehicle tires is making contact with the ground there is always a coefficient of friction being developed so because of this friction coefficient there is a rolling resistance aerodynamic drag as you all know that when the vehicle is moving um, through air there is always a aerodynamic drag that is acting on the vehicle climbing resistance the real and the direct value is mg sin theta and it acts on the vehicle in opposite direction when the vehicle is moving up when the vehicle is moving down the slope it act with the vehicle and contribute in the driving force so basically these are all the four forces that are acting on the vehicle and are being modeled for calculating the power demand and the power requirement for a vehicle so we know we now know the resistive forces acting on the vehicle now we require the power that are really demanded so there are two parameters to understand that let me take a pointer so you know the value of power equals to force into velocity simple formula but what is pd and what is pe there are for power demand that are fulfilled by the engine but the power demands fulfilled by the engine are different like when it is uh, fulfilled by the engine uh, suppose internal combustion engine so there will be a power that is available at the crankshaft which is not equal to the power available at the wheels power available at the crankshaft will be equals to pe uh, engine power that engine produces since there is a drive train in between and drive train consists of mechanical component so there will be a efficiency loss like the efficiency will not be 100% so power available at the wheels will be slightly less than the power available at the engine crankshaft or any motor crank motor shaft you can understand so this power pd is the power available at the wheel p is the power produced by the engine but with uh, all resistive forces adding into velocity like fd is the driving force you can take it equal to the all the resistive forces acting on the vehicle so this fd also contain a velocity term this is the homework for all of you who are watching to see which is the uh, velocity term which is the resistive forces which contain the velocity term and multiply it with the velocity you get the power demand of the vehicle which we require at wheel so this value will be slightly less than the value available at engine engine so this is the relationship and for typical value you can use this estimation so power equals to force into velocity like force also contain the velocity term so i think there will be velocity power more than one like velocity square or velocity cube that you have to see so power demand will vary according to that if you need the vehicle to top speed of vehicle to increase from 150 to 175 accordingly the power demand will increase so if you know the relationship you can easily draw the graph this is a very important slide uh, here i will be talking more about the hybrid vehicle powertrain model so we have serial hybrid we have parallel hybrid and we have the combined hybrid configurations in serial hybrid system the power produced by engine is p1 power produced by the battery uh, engine uh, electric motor through battery only is p2 so all the power generated by the internal combustion engine is stored in the form of electricity through the generator into the battery so battery is getting the power from the internal combustion engine also and from the charge so the power that is available at the wheel will be equal to the power of ic engine producing 
plus charge power of the battery means P1 plus P2. In parallel hybrid system, this is different. Either you can provide power through internal combustion engine or you can provide power through battery. So here either P1 will be the total power or P2 will be the total power. Combined hybrid configuration. This is a typical type because there is a generator as well as motor, there is a power split device, there is battery, there is internal combustion engine. So basically what happens here, you have a choice whether you want P1 plus P2 or you want P1 or you want just P2. So what happens here, there is a power split device which is controllable. This is electronics and these are controllable. So it decides whether how much percentage of power produced by the engine should be stored in battery or how much power should be directly provided to the motor. So this combined hybrid type contains both serial and parallel hybrid. So basically this is the end of the topic and before ending I want to tell you what will be the content for the next video. In the next video we will be learning about engine torque and speed variations, electric vehicle and IC powertrain comparisons and modeling of vehicle for the maximum velocity. So if you like this video give it a like, subscribe our channel and if you have any doubt you can write down on the comment we will see and try to solve your doubts. Thank you for watching the video.